Recently, I showed you world's cheapest GPS RTK module, the LC29H. I want to use this module in my DIY robotic lawnmower project that I called Indie Mower and that I have been developing for the last few months. The goal of the project is to create a very simple and easy to build lawnmower that you can make at home and that will work with the perimeter wire or with GPS RTK. But I only got the DA version of this module to work. This is the module meant to go on to the rover, the mower, the one that is moving, but for the RTK to work you also need another one for the base station and I had problems with setting it up in the previous video but thanks to your feedback on my email and in the comments I got it to work this time and I will show you how I did it, how you can do it too and how well it works. The important thing to remember is to buy the proper module because unfortunately you cannot just reconfigure them in software. So for example, the base station module is for the base station. You cannot just change some settings and use it on the rover. And also you cannot use the rover module as the base station. Before I started playing with the software and getting everything to work, I obviously had to get some kind of waterproof case to put everything inside so that it is secure outside. Of course, I will be using a Raspberry Pi with the module. You can just plug it in and that's it. You also need a power supply for the Raspberry Pi and a GPS antenna that is included with the module. I know people in the comments will ask why not to 3D print such a case. And yes, that's possible. But in my opinion, it's quite hard to get 3D prints to be really waterproofed. So I think paying just $5 online for a case that is truly waterproofed is definitely a good deal. I also made this 3D printed antenna holder that was just super glued to the top of the case. In this video, you will notice that I've blurred a lot of information on screen recordings. I don't want to show you my precise location within a few centimeters of accuracy because I care deeply about my personal data and privacy. You might want to do the same since companies are constantly collecting and selling our information, which is why we end up with spam calls emails and even physical mail. But here is some good news. You have the right to request the removal of your data from this list. However, doing it on your own can be time consuming, especially with hundreds of data brokers out there. And that brings me to the sponsor of this video, Incogni. Incogni is a tool that handles all of these issues for you. When you sign up, you grant them permission to act on your behalf and they take care of everything. They send out data removal requests and let you monitor the progress through a dashboard that shows how many requests have been sent, how many were successful and how many are still in progress. Even after your data is removed, Incogni doesn't stop working. They regularly resend removal requests to ensure your private information stays that way. I really hate getting sales calls or worse calls from AI bots that sound incredibly realistic. Incogni drastically reduces the chance of that happening by continuously monitoring and removing your data so you are less likely to end up on these lists again. If you too want to reclaim your privacy, check out the link in the video description. Not only does clicking the link help support my channel, but it also gets you a discount on Incogni's annual plan. I'm thrilled that Incogni makes protecting our privacy so simple and I appreciate them sponsoring this video. The link is in the video description. Thank you very much. And now we go back to GPS RTK base station. Here's what I did in the corner of my workshop. The inside setup, the Raspberry Pi in the enclosure attached to the wall. And this is the antenna cable. And the antenna is on the outside of the workshop, on the top of the roof, somewhere right there. And here you can see the GPS antenna attached to the 3D printed holder. This is attached to my workshop. And there is a screw that I put inside of the holder and that is magnetically attached, the antenna is magnetically attached to the screw. I know it would be perfect to put it at the very corner of the roof, but I think this place is also good and the antenna cable is unfortunately not long enough for that. There is only one problem still. I have no idea how to configure it without windows. 
The virtual machine does not work, the USB IP does not work, I cannot get it to work on a Raspberry Pi. The only idea I have for now is to bring my PC, the big computer, into the workshop and just do it. Sometimes the stupid solutions are not that stupid because they are the ones that work. Okay, I need to explain something a bit more here. So Qualtech, the producer of LC29H chip, also makes software for that. It's called QGNSS and it runs only on Windows. I couldn't get it to work with USB IP or virtual machine, as I said, while being on the roof. So I decided to move my PC into the workshop, which later I found it was totally unnecessary. You can control the module and configure the survey in with only serial comments. I didn't know that at the time, so hopefully that makes a bit more sense now. I did all the work of moving my computer into the workshop, placing the antenna, and in the end, after a few hours, it did not work at all. Unfortunately, even though QGNSS is fancy software for visualization, when you are doing this survey in, that is finding the precise location of the antenna, that is, well, essential for a base station, there is no, like, feedback at all on what's happening. You just have to manually type the comments or copy-paste them, and that's not a really good user experience. I also found another piece of open source software on GitHub, and this thing was also created by a person from Poland and the project is not being developed anymore unfortunately but it seems that you can do the survey in here and I tried it, it gives you feedback anyway, the project seems interesting, I will give you a link in the description but I decided to continue with my low amount of custom software approach I realized that you can control it all with simple serial comments and these serial comments are documented in the documentation but who wants to read it, I will give you a simple explanation I'm using this Python script to send the comments from the Raspberry Pi and I'm connected to the Raspberry Pi via SSH from my MacBook and I'm simply sending all the comments there. I start by restoring the module to the default settings, I use that just in case I did something wrong earlier, I think it's a good idea to do this, then I do start survey in. I did it for one hour, that is 3600 seconds and with the limit of accuracy of 15 meters. There is no feedback at all whether the survey in is completed already, so you just have to send this first comment with error at the end every minute or so and check if there are already results in the XYZ. And you should get something similar like this comment with the duration that you set previously and XYZ should be the values. When they are zeros, the survey in process is not completed yet. You should save these values as this will be useful later in the next step and also later in setting up the RTK based software. We can use the next comment and just replace the XYZ at the end with the values we got with the previous comment and at the very end just save the changes using this comment. And after that the module is configured but I would like to tell you a few more things about the documentation. For the duration they refer to that as seconds but in fact it's number of samples that meet the limit of accuracy. If they do not they are not counted so it will take the number of samples but not necessarily seconds. Also if you set the limit of accuracy to zero as they say in the documentation it simply won't work so please just don't do that. All this time I have been connected from my computer to the module with a USB cable, I have not been using the Raspberry Pi at all, and finally when the survey in was completed, I found out that the Raspberry Pi cannot connect to the Wi-Fi from my workshop. Here's my house, here is the workshop, and all the Wi-Fi routers are in the house. And it looked like the Raspberry Pi is too far away and can connect to the Wi-Fi. I moved it closer to the house, like very close, and found out that, well, it still cannot connect to the Wi-Fi. In this project I have been using a Raspberry Pi 3B version 1.2, which is not even the 3B+, and the Wi-Fi range seems to be very terrible on this board, so fortunately I also have the 3B+, I replaced that and that seemed to solve all the problems. But for now I decided to use the Raspberry Pi closer to the home to have a good Wi-Fi range, and I put it on top of my umbrella that is standing just on the terrace, and that was also a good placement because it was quite high up. But part of the signal and the antenna uh, was blocked by the house that is very close. I thought I would give it a try and it was just a temporary location for the experiments, but in the end it worked. 
We will also need RTK base and open source software which you can find on GitHub. This part is quite well explained in the WaveShares tutorial. XYZ values that we got previously with the command will be useful now as we need to convert them from ECF to LLA with QGNSS and then paste into the RTK base software as that and the last value needs to have at least two decimal places otherwise it won't work. We need to select the proper port, speed, set the name of the module, the receiver format to RTCM3, the antenna is I think the default one and lastly the port. Once that's completed we can turn on the main service and jump to creating the Ntrip caster service. Use whatever values you need for the username and password but keep the same port number and create any amount name you want. The long list of numbers is filled in automatically so we don't need to worry about that. If you did everything correctly on the status tab you should see the signals from the satellites and preferably a lot more signals and all of them should be green. My antenna placement was quite terrible at that time. Once the base station was finally working I just grabbed the module that I used in the previous video. It was already connected to the Raspberry Pi Zero and I did this simple holder that holds the power bank. I have been using the very same Python script just when running the script I change the parameters so that it connects to my base station instead of this network of base stations and after a few minutes I saw that GPS RTK fixed which means that the base station is working and we should have very precise positioning but how precise really? Let's check it. To check the precision of positioning I created a simple Python script that plots all the points the first point is a starting point in 00 and then you have the difference between all the points and that shows you over time how the position is changing. So firstly I did that for my own base station and I took the screenshot of the plot after 15 minutes, half an hour and one hour. Here are the results and after that I connected to ASG AUPOS, ASG AUPSOS, the network of RTK base stations in Poland and I did the very same experiments with the very same settings but just different base station. And I was pretty sure that my own base station, not really super precisely positioned, with very inexpensive hardware, will perform poorly compared to the open network that probably uses very high quality high-end components. It wasn't the case. Actually, my base station was a lot better and the precision in positioning was a lot better than in this open network of base station, which is pretty surprising. What is also very important in RTK is the distance between your module and the base station, which for my own base station, it was just a few meters. And for the base station from the network, it was about 10 kilometers from the closest one. So that might be the reason why the difference is so big. Later, I performed this experiment again, just to make sure that it wasn't just some noise or something that happened you know, at that exact moment and the results were pretty much exactly the same and my own base station with very inexpensive components was better than the ones from the network. I got the base station to work, it wasn't really that hard, the precision is surprisingly very good. You can be like, great, it is working, but there is one very big problem. The placement of my base station on top of the umbrella, it's only temporary, it's not very clean, definitely not final and I want to mount it on my workshop since I switched from the older version of the Raspberry Pi. This one connects to my Wi-Fi properly, so I wanted to move again into my workshop, put the antenna again on top of the roof, connect everything, prepare the base station and get it to work. I took off the base station and as you can see it is completely covered in ice and snow. Also the antenna is covered as well and I'm wondering whether the ice on top of the camera may disturb the signal and lower the accuracy. I don't know, but if you know, please let me know in the comments. And there was a problem. I wasn't able to complete the survey in at a decent level of accuracy. Why? I had no idea, but just before filming this part of the video, literally like five minutes before I clicked record on my camera, I found that the sun activity is very high recently and that might be the reason why the RTK is not working properly. The signals that I see in the RTK based software are very low and there are not even all the constellations visible so that might be all happening because of the sun activity. I will try again in a few days and hopefully finally it will work on top of my roof. I even put the antenna higher because I thought that maybe it will help a bit and it didn't and basically that's the end of my cable so Either I will have to find a new placement because it worked better on top of my umbrella than it did on top of my workshop. Which is quite surprising because nothing is blocking the antenna on top of the workshop and the house was blocking the antenna 
on top of the umbrella. I'm really happy that the base station is working and that the module is working because that is a good starting point to implement the RTK in my indie mower project. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, consider liking the video and subscribing to my channel to not miss my future videos. Thanks a lot to the sponsor of this video and of course to you for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.